Lesson 31 demo. An exponential equation is an equation containing a variable and an exponent. So the thing that the unknown is in the exponent. Uh, let's take a look at how to solve exponential equations using logarithms. So step one is to isolate the exponential expression. So you want your equation to look like b to the x equals a constant, and a constant, a number to the x equals another number. So in step one here, I'm going to divide both sides by two, right? Because the order of operations says that I have, I would have to raise that five to the x before I can multiply by two. So 2 times 5 to the x does not equal 10 to the x. You can't do the multiplication first. So instead, we divide both sides by 2 so that we get 5 to the x equals 15. Step 2 is to take the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation. You can actually take any base log, um, but natural or common are nice choices because we have bu calculator buttons for those. So I'm going to take the ln of 5 to the x equals the ln of 15. Use the property of logs that lets you take the x in the exponent and bring it down in front. So this says x times the ln of 5 equals the ln of 15. Now you just have to remember that ln of 5 and ln of 15 are just numbers. You could type those in your calculator and it would give you an, a, a constant, a number. So if I want to get x by itself, this says x times the ln of 5, where the ln of 5 is just a number. So to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by the ln of 5. So those cancel, and you get x equals ln 15 over ln 5. So that is um, called an exact solution. So in your homework or on a quiz or a test, if you're asked for an exact solution, you would just leave the logarithms in there. And then if you're asked for an approximate answer, you type that into your calculator, right? So this would say x is approximately, go to your calculator, and type in ln 15 divided by ln 5, and you'd get 1.68, okay, 1.68. But this is an approximate answer, not what was asked for, right? It says do not use a decimal approximation, do not round check your solution in the original equation. So th that's what one thing that the 1.68 is useful for. So if we go back up to our original equ equation and we type um, 2 times 5 to the 1.68, we're hopeful that we should get something very close to 30. It's not going to be exact because we rounded that 1.68, but 29.87 is very close to 30. All right, so that seems like it worked out well. All right, a few more practice problems um, before we do the activities. I want to solve 6.098 equals 3.6e to the 0.017x. So first we want to isolate the e to the some stuff. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3.6. So those cancel over here. So I have e to the 0.017x equals... 6.098 divided by 3.6 is 1.694. Good enough. Um, take the ln of both sides. Okay. The ln of e to some stuff is just your stuff. Right? You could also think about bringing the exponent down in front, but then the ln of e is 1. So this just comes out to 0.017x. And the ln of 1.694 is on the left. Divide both sides by 0.017 to get the x by itself. So we get x is the ln of 1.694 over 0.017, which is approximately. 1.694 number and I'm going to change it to a fraction so I'm more exact. 3049 over 1800. Hmm. All right. 
um, the ln of that number divided by 0 0.017 is approximately 31. All right, so now we're going to talk about log equations. Um, a log equation is just any equation that has a logarithm in it. The goal for solving a log equation is to convert it into an equivalent but easier to solve exponential equation. You may need to do some manipulation with log rules before you can do the conversion. So step one, isolate the log expression. So in this case, that means I need to divide by two. So the twos cancel, so I have log of 5x. So the log expression is all by itself. Rewrite the equation as an equivalent exponential equation. So remember there's a little invisible 10 here. That's your base. So rewrite this as an exponential equation. My base is 10. The log always equals the exponent and then that should equal 5x. So this says 100 equals 5x. So x is 20. And you should always check in your, fine, in your original equation, 2 log of 5x. So I have 2 log of 5 times 20. Does that equal 4? Well, this is 2 log of 100. The log of 100 is 2, so this is 2 times 2, which is 4. Check. All right, so in that example, we didn't have to do anything with log properties in order to isolate the log, but we often must use those properties to isolate the single logarithm on one side of the equation. So I just copied them here for your reference so that we can refer to them as needed. So if there's more than one log in your equation, you're going to use the compression stuff that we did um, a couple classes ago where you compress your logs into a single log. So we want to get all the log terms on one side. So this is going to be 4 equals log base 2 of 4x plus log base 2 of x. Use one or more of your properties to combine the logs into a single expression. So this is 4 equals log base 2. Because those logs are combined via addition, I can compress them into a single log via multiplication. 4x times x is 4x squared. Now convert this to an exponential equation and solve. So my base is 2, my exponent is 4, that equals 4x squared. So 2 to the 4th is 16. Divide both sides by 4, so you get x squared equals 4 which means x is plus or minus 2. Before I circle it, I'm going to check my um, solution in the original equation. And I cannot put minus 2 into a logarithm. You can't put negative values into a log, only positive values. So negative 2 is definitely not a solution, because right here I would have to take log base 2 of negative 2. That's um, not part of the domain, so I discard that one. And so I would just say x equals 2 is my solution. All right, so it does it for the demo portion. Um, move on to your class activities.